Hi there, and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke, and here we are almost at the end of 2019. It's almost Christmas, and we've got some goodies for you, just in time. So let's see what they are. First up, we have the Joy C. The Joy C is a Stick C hat, which is a base for the Stick C. Pop it into the 8 pin connection there, and we have two omnidirectional joysticks which we can press in also. They have a button underneath, and down at the bottom here we have the typical on off switch that we have on most of the hats. At the base of both of the sticks, we have 12 individually addressable RGB LEDs, so 24 in total. Now if we flip it over, we can see a battery. This is the 16340 battery. It has 750 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts of life in it. And this, is, this can be removed. It also charges if the USB-C is attached to the stick C. Uh, when you get this, make sure to remove the plastic tabs before using. And uh, yeah, let's see what specs the Stick C Joy C hat has. Okay, let's see what's next. Here we have the Rover C. The Rover C is a super cool little chassis for the Stick C. And just pop that in there. Around the Stick C we can see a lot of stuff here. We have uh, three uh, Lego mounting holes either side, which is great for attaching your sensors or different kinds of Lego parts. There are four mounting holes, which uh, take a M3 screws, uh, a Grove port on either side of the Stick C. These are I2C, so any of the I2C units um, can be used with the Rover C. Uh, down here we have the usual on off button for controlling the battery below. So below there is the same battery that was in the Joy C, the 16340. Um, this one is fixed though, this can't be taken out, this is kind of welded in there. Uh, but again, this will be charged when the USB C is connected to the Stick C. Uh, here we also have four N20 motors, which are attached to these cool little gearboxes. And the centerpiece of this device is these mechanum wheels. Now I don't know if you've seen any mechanum wheel wheels before. Um, we have them on our M5 bot, um, the one with the LiDAR, the LiDAR bot. And uh, this can not only go forward, backwards, and turn like typical wheels, but uh, this can also strafe left and right and at uh, diagonal as well. You can have a look at a little video here of the Joy C controlling the uh, Rover C. So that's one application we could use the Joy C for controlling this little car. Okay, let's see what other specs this device has. Okay, let's see what we have up next. Next we have the 18650C hat. That's a lot of numbers together. Okay, well basically what this is, is a power bank, you could say, for the Stick C. Inside is that mighty 18650C battery, which is a 1200 milliamp hours, 3.7 volt battery. So this is going to give the M5 Stick C some serious juice. So it's designed for any applications where you want the Stick C to be sat there for a long time doing whatever you want it to. Let's see, I've, have a look at a few of the other features of this device. Uh, this one can uh, here we can just slot the Stick C in quite easy without removing any parts. Sits in there snugly. But also if we are to remove the screws on the back, this panel will release 
and we'll find some other features inside. So just looking from the outside we can already see that the eight pins of the stick C are broken out at the front. We have the usual uh, little sticky label there that's showing you the function of each of those pins. And we have a screw hole for mounting on the wall. Two M3 uh, screw inserts that we can screw into. And the typical um, Lego holes here. So we can attach any of the units here in uh, sideways position here. Just like that. Now you may be thinking, well, the bottom of the stick C is inside the device, so how are we supposed to use the growth port? Well, you might notice on the back here, there's a little little window here, and this can basically be pushed through. And this allows for, if we open this up, we can insert the growth cable through this little window, and then plug it into the back of the stick C. So we still get to use both the 8-pin GPIO and the growth port on the bottom and have a lot of battery. And then at the very base of this device there is the USB-C and this is only for charging. This won't, you won't be able to program from this end. So you'll have to do your program first and then put the device into the hat. Okay, let's have a look at some of the other features of this device. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Next up we have the Faces 2 base. So those familiar with M5 stack are probably familiar with the fact that it's a stackable modular system and the Faces series is part of that. So we basically have a base with uh, interchangeable faceplates such as this gaming faceplate that sort of snaps in there onto those pins and then we get the regular M5 stack any of the models will do and that pops on there okay so what's the difference between the faces 2 then and the original faces let's, let's have a quick compare the Faces 2 is compatible with all of the previous Faces kit modules, but let's have a look at a few of the similarities and differences here. So we've got the same 600 milliamp hour battery. A lot looking similar here with the circuit board, but you might notice one big difference here. Instead of just a plain PCB here, this is a breakout board. If we look at them from head on, we can see the original faces doesn't have any ports here just it has it has a bunch of pins but here we have two ports uh, port B and port C here so this is like the ports on the M5 stack uh, fire or the M5 go blue is the port for UART communication and B is for GPIO uh, whether it be analog or digital, both are okay. So one unique feature, apart from it having these ports uh, that you wouldn't have on a standard M5 stack, uh, and you would lose if you removed the top of an M5 go or a fire to attach it, um, this faces kit can actually be controlled. Instead of putting the M5 stack on top on this pin bus, we could also control it over growth cable. So if we attach a growth cable to the UART of a, a M5 stack device and attached it to the UART port of this device, then we could control it that way. Let's have a look at some of the other differences. So here we have a little bit of a trade-off. Um, you see here on the Faces 2, there are LED RGB bars just like in the M5 Go and Fire editions. But the trade-off here is that if you have these bars on the side, these pinout, pinouts here, which were on the original version, are no longer available there. But it depends what you're after in your application. 
perhaps you just want some kind of signaling um, device just like the LEDs rather than having all these ports there. If we flip them over now we can see a few differences. So on the faces 2 we have a screw mounting hole so attach this to a wall or something like that. Um, here between the two ports we have an M3 um, screw mounting hole so this could either be used for mounting it to a wall, mounting some other device, perhaps even screwing into a unit. And they both still have the um, pogo pins there for charging, but you'll notice there aren't as many sticky pads on here. And I'm not sure if the uh, there's less magnets. Uh, I'll have to open up them and see. So that's about it for the differences here, I think. Yeah, I think we covered them. Here are some other specifications of the faces too. Okay, let's see what we have next. And finally here we have the LoRa 868. So you may have seen in some of the previous product introduction videos, we introduced a bunch of telecommunications related stacks. So LoRa is this new standard of communication for IoT which works at long range I think a max of around maybe 10 meters or so and uh, you can network a whole bunch of these up to send messages between each other and the benefit of using LoRa is it's very low power so it works great for those uh, low power applications maybe uh, maybe somewhere remote once we flip it over here, we can see um, this little chip. So this is the uh, LoRa uh, RA1 uh, RA01H module from AI Thinker. I'll pop the data sheet for that down in the comments section. And you can see here we have um, we have an IPEX uh, antenna and also we have the regular FCP FPC antenna so you can choose between either of those and then we have the regular pinout for connecting multiple stacks together okay let's have a look at some of the other specifications of this device and that's it for our video today Hope you enjoyed this. I'm sure you're looking forward to the products as much as I am. And if you have any comments, any questions, please make sure to leave them down in the comments section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.